Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired chef from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest video. In this one, I'll be making this very easy recipe, peanut and chocolate chip cookies. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on my website. I'll leave links at the end and under the video or just click on the eye icon top right of the screen. Before I go any further, I'd like to give a quick shout out to this week's Patreon and PayPal donators. And they are Diane Dennett, Patrick Collins, Charles B. Conway, Ilona Borden, Barry Foster, Jerry Farnham, Jesse Abney, and finally, Jesse Ragsdale. And once again, please help support the channel by joining my Patreon appeal for as little as $2 per month or make a one-off donation via my PayPal page. It really will help keep the channel going. Okay, for this recipe, you'll need a couple of baking trays lined with parchment paper. And this is the size of the trays I'm using. A good way of keeping the paper flat is to rub a little butter here and there. Time to preheat your oven to 190 degrees Celsius, that's 375 Fahrenheit, or gas mark 5. I'm setting mine to 170 because my oven's fan assisted and it runs about 20 degrees hotter than indicated on the dial. One more thing you'll need to prep at the start of the recipe is to roughly chop the peanuts. If you don't have one of these mini processors, you can simply place the nuts in a strong plastic food bag and gently bash them with a rolling pin. I'll be making my cookies by hand, but you can use a stand or a hand mixer if you want. Right, whether you're making them by hand or using a machine. The first job is to cream the butter and the sugars together. And this is made much easier if your butter is at room temperature. I'm using slightly salted butter in mine. If you're using unsalted, you'll need to add a quarter teaspoon, that's two grams of salt to the recipe. If you are using a stand mixer, use the paddle attachment. For mixing by hand, you can use a wooden spoon or as I like to use, a good strong spatula. Now just mix those together until it's nice and smooth and creamy. Time to add the 180 grams, that's 6.5 ounces of peanut butter. You can use crunchy or smooth. I like to use crunchy for cookies. Now blend that in with the butter and the sugar. Next, mix in the egg and the vanilla. If you don't have the vanilla extract, you can just leave it out, but it does add another flavour to these great cookies. Now add the chopped dry roasted peanuts and the chocolate chips and gently fold those into the mix. Ok, add the all purpose or plain flour and sift in the baking powder and the baking soda. You may know the baking soda as bicarbonate of soda. And if you're wondering, the baking soda helps the cookie spread and the baking powder helps the cookie rise. Now gently fold that together until it becomes a nice sticky dough.
Right, I'll transfer that into a smaller bowl and I'll take this opportunity to weigh it. And if your measurements were correct at the start, yours should weigh just over 900 grams. That's 32 ounces. Before dividing this peanut cookie dough, it's best to chill it for an hour or so. That'll make it much easier to handle. So I'll cover it with some cling film and get it into the fridge for at least one hour. Right, mine's just spent an hour in the fridge, so it's time to divide the dough into 16 pieces. I'll enter the total weight into the calculator and that was 915 grams and that divided by 16 is 57 grams each. If you're working in imperial measurements, that's 2 ounces each. Once you have each piece weighed, roll it into a ball and evenly space 8 on each tray. Then slightly press them down into a puck shape. With these being peanut cookies, I'll be giving them the usual well-known cross-hatch pattern using a large fork. Although this looks nice, it does have a serious meaning to warn anyone with a peanut allergy to steer clear of this pattern. So dip your fork into some cold water and lightly make the pattern as shown on each cookie. Once all 16 have been formed, get them into the preheated oven and set your timer for 13 minutes. I normally get 20 cookies out of this batch, so these are slightly bigger than I'm used to, so they may need an extra couple of minutes. And sure enough, mine needs an extra two minutes. And seeing as they're going back in, I'll swap the trays around for a bit more of an even cooking. So if you're making 16, don't forget you'll need to be in for 15 minutes. and they are looking much better. Once they're done, get them out of the oven and carefully slide them off the trays and onto a wire rack as shown. The cookies are very soft at this point, so try not to touch them. After 10 minutes cooling, this should be hard enough to take them off the paper and directly onto the wire rack. Now let them completely cool for at least 30 minutes. And this is the best part. Gotta have a taste of these. The aroma that comes from these is absolutely amazing. I don't know what it is, but there's something really comforting that comes from the smell of cooking with peanuts. Or maybe it's just me. They have a shortcake texture to them, they're not too soft and when you bite into them you get that crunchy peanut mixed with the chocolate and that rich buttery flavour. They are absolutely fantastic. And once again a big thumbs up from another one of our customers favourites.
Well, thank you again for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in the kitchen and bye for now.